her. Her soul is, it doesn't belong to the person above. She is very dark and very soulless. And I never been around this girl for more than 10 hours. Her, her energy, I got to witness this very first hand. I was around her every day, 24 seven. I mean, not all the time, cause she would go straight to the back into that, into that room. And she, and when I would see her, like um, at the venue and whatever, because after the Philly situation, I barely saw her. She was dark. She just, oh my God, like, it's even scary to talk about. Like, bro, that girl, she needs to be saved. Ask me how far I think you're gonna get with that personality, which is, you don't have one. With the way you act, with the way you move, you are a soulless individual. You are really demonic. You have a very demonic vibe to you, especially with the way I was seeing you every day, the way you mope around and you just, like, if your makeup artist is not bringing that wing and making it pick up your eye, you are dead. You really look dead. You really look dead. And I'm gonna keep it a being with you. Hold up, not Ice Spice getting exposed for being an evil Dominican woman and using black women as an accessory to make people think she's black. Of me not knowing if she was Nigerian. And I'm just like, girl, are you crazy? And she never said that she felt the way. And it was just like, I didn't even know that she was mad at me. She's just in messages talking about me. So she tells me like, I think everybody's jealous of me. Don't take offense to it. I say that about everybody. I'd say that everybody's jealous of me. I even say that about my mom. Uh, like, that's kind of sick. But, okay. Like, okay. Fast forward, though, I started thinking that a lot of the things that Ice was doing was calculated. Chow, y'all better get in here for this mess. Because things are not looking too good for Ice after her best friend, Clea Trappa, put her on blast in an hour-long rant about how Ice mistreated, unpaid, and starved her during her recent Y2K tour. Cleo said Ice used her as the token black friend to make people think she's a black woman who loves other black women. Meanwhile, Ice is actually Dominican and she hates black women. I didn't even get that vibe. And when I spoke out on it, I got called a careerless bum. I'm never gonna be anything. Da -da 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 -da. I'm a bum. I'm an individual you are. And you couldn't wait for the opportunity to try to call me a bum. You couldn't wait to try to speak down on me. To speak down on me. Somebody that you looked up to. Somebody that you was watching since high school. You told me it was a full circle moment meeting me, bro. Meeting me. Being, being in the same car as me. Like, you could not believe it. You were so gagged. But now your head is so big, you don't even know where you came from. Aren't you from the gutter? Aren't you a Bronx from the gutter, bro? Not too long ago, Ice's ex-best friend, Baby Storm, exposed, exposed her for being a very bad friend and trash-talking people, including Nicki Minaj and Cleo herself. But people didn't take Baby Storm too seriously because it kind of looked like she was having a mental breakdown, which she later admitted to. But it turns out everything she said about Ice was actually true. I swear, though, I started thinking that a lot of the things that Ice was doing was calculated like even the thing after her best friend exposing her it was like oh like let's go to the basketball game come with me to this basketball game i'm thinking like oh she just wants me to come to come with her to a basketball game like maybe she's trying to make it up i don't know why i kept thinking like she was trying to make it up for being like caught being fake but it was just like even the basketball game it was like one day later she's like dropping a song it's like every time she's like inviting me out, cause we never chilled on some like chill shit, bro. Like it was never like there's some chill. It was always like in the blogs the next day and the song is dropping too. So it was like, what? This girl kind of uses me for her rollouts. So I'm just like, um, okay. Cleo is not playing with Ice at all. And she even went as far as saying if Ice wasn't the person she is today, she would have swung on her to instill some respect into her. That starts to turn me. So I didn't want to be turned so bad that I spaz on her. I spaz on her. I swing on her. I'm locked up. Ah, da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even want that to come out of this at all. Because the way she goes back and forth and the way she's ready to argue, that's somebody that knows that they got people behind her. Because that mouth would not be running like that two years ago. I'll tell you that much. 
Child, let's get right into it because there's a lot of hot tea to sip here. Okay, so this entire mess started just one day after Ice ended the US leg of her Y2K tour. Turns out, things didn't go very well during that tour because just 24 hours after it ended, Ice's best friend Clea Trappa jumped on TikTok and posted a six-part story about how Ice humiliated her, left her stranded, underpaid her, and even starved that woman during the tour. According to Cleo, Ice called her just a day before the tour started and told her that she wanted her to come on tour to be an opener. Cleo said she was a little unsure about the whole thing and how it was gonna work, cause it was just a day before the tour started, but Ice promised her that she would take care of her and accommodate everything so she could just pull up. So of course Cleo accepted, because she's an independent artist and she can use all the promotion she can get, but as soon as she got there, she realized this ain't gonna be the best experience. July, I get a call from Ice, um, very early in the morning. Cleo, come on tour with me. I miss you. Come. And I'm just like, girl, I'm not about to come on tour with you and watch you perform all month. Like, I got I got stuff that I could be doing. I could be getting money. I have opportunities in New York. I have brand deals. I have things that I need to focus on. So for me to travel all over the United States with you to watch you perform, kind of crazy. She's like, no, I want you to perform. And I gag. You want me to perform? She ain't never, ever, ever, ever brought me out on stage. I was like, oh, wait. Okay, like, I guess this girl, and in my head, this is what I'm thinking. I'm like, I guess she's really trying to make up for that fake that got exposed, like, a month ago. Like, she's really trying to, like, you know, be an actual friend because that was weird as And I checked her about that and even for her to apologize was like pulling teeth. Like, girl, you got caught calling your friend jealous for no reason and her excuse was that I didn't speak up when I was asked if she was Nigerian like girl I met you I met you a month before that video I didn't even know you was Nigerian so that was kind of weird to me too that she was upset at me for not knowing if she was Nigerian and she said that you could have at least said I was black like girl I didn't even know you am I your PR am I supposed to be clearing up every time somebody's asking about you being black or Nigerian like that's that's not my role and I don't even know you and I don't even know you. So I was so confused. Anyways, we moved back. Anyways, after that situation that had happened um, with her ex-best friend exposing her for calling like just about everybody jealous, that was kind of like sick too. Because why do you think everybody's jealous of you? She literally tried to link me being jealous of her with that interview. Good friend. I made a flyer announcing that I was going to be coming on tour with her. It did not even get reposted. It didn't even get a comment or a like, and she was tagged in it. Um, the bill, it didn't even have my name on it. Like, just about nobody knew I was coming on tour. It was like a special guest. Like, she didn't even, like, shine any sort of, like, her own light on me. It was, like, kind of, like, all me. Like, I want my fans to come out. Like, she didn't really try to, like, mesh me in with her actual fan base or try to, like, put her fan base onto me. Very calculated, you know? It was just giving like, oh, let's, let's, you know, let Cleo eat, but we gonna give her crumbs. Like, we gonna shine light on her, but let's dim it. You know what I'm saying? It just gave that so much. Online says the show starts at eight. It would even say nine sometimes. And guess what time I was going on? At 7.30, 7.45. I was going on before the show starts. So that was kind of weird in itself. I had no idea what to expect going on tour. I had no idea until I got on tour and started seeing certain things. And I'm just like, wait, why don't I have that? I didn't have a room. I was told I was going to be with her, but I didn't have a room. No room for me backstage at all. I was in her dressing room. I didn't have no writer. I was with her. And before I came on tour, I asked her, what were the things that I was going to have to pay for? Because this is so last minute. Like, you're only giving me one day to prepare. Like, it's July 30 something and we going on tour August 1st. Like, girl, like literally one day. So I'm just like, what do I have to pay for? Nothing. You're going to be with me. You're good. You're going to be with me. So I was like, okay, everything is handled. I'm just going to go. I'm going to make the best out of it. I'm gonna make the absolute best out of it. I don't have no dances or nothing. I'm just gonna 
go out there and do what I can do. But everything was not taken care of because Ice went on to make Cleo's life a living hell on this tour and even banned her from bringing anybody along, including friends and family. Cleo said Ice's team refused to do anything for her because they were instructed to only serve Ice, even though Cleo is supposed to be Ice's plus one for this tour. And mind you, the reason why Cleo couldn't bring anybody on tour is because Ice said everything was taken care of. But now it's very clear the situation was not taken care of at all. And the worst part is, Cleo wasn't even allowed to bring any friends or anybody at all. So now she just stranded with folks who clearly don't care about her. The bill. Like, I'm not even on the lineup, like, okay. Anyways, let's go into how the tour went. So, first couple of days was cute. We went to Philly, and this is when things go left now. Um, Yeah, we're in a hotel room. We not sure if we're gonna like bring our bags to the venue because I guess like we were gonna come back to the hotel but she told me don't leave your bags at the venue you might need some you don't leave your bags at the hotel you might need something in it and I was like okay I'll bring it her security who brings all her bags she has like 10 bags he brought my bag brought the bags down and now we're at the venue and I do need something in the suitcase. Like I had a wardrobe malfunction. Like she said, I probably would have. That's that she cursed me. Okay. Cause now I do have a wardrobe malfunction. Um, so I'm like, Oh, how can I get the bag? She's like, tell the security to get it for you. I go to the security. I'm like, can you get my bag out the, out the trunk? Cause I have no idea where the trunk is, where the car went. We just came into the venue. Like we are just, we working, whatever. Um, he goes, he gets the bag. Brings it upstairs. I changed, da 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 end of the show. I put my bag next to her 10 bags and the big black dresser. And, yeah, I'm thinking everything is going to be moved but like back into the truck and we could, you know, leave, go back to the hotel. Um, I turn around and my bag is still there. My bag was still there. All her bags was gone. I'm just like, why would somebody just leave my bag? Like, I'm like, I asked the security, I'm like, can you take my bag? He said no. I was like, what the f What's going on? He brought all her bags. He came okay, I'm like, can I pay somebody to bring my bags down? Because I didn't want to bring the bags down. Why would I want to bring the bags down? I'm just a girl. So, I'm asking around nobody's word. So, I'm like, all right, let me bring the bags. I'm tight, though. I'm tight. Like, I'm not used to this stuff. Like, what the f I just put, I'm just supposed to be performing. Need I remind you, I'm not even allowed to bring somebody on tour with me. So I didn't really have anybody helping me. It was just me. Um, but I feel like she could have simply said to the security, like, take Cleo's bag. Don't forget Cleo's bag. But I got a sense that she just wanted me to struggle. And that's kind of up as like a friend. Like, so I carry the bags. I take one duffel bag. I'm walking down. Um, it's pouring outside. Um, I put it in the car. The fans are screaming, Cleo, can we get a picture? Cleo, can we get a picture? As I'm struggling with a bag. And it's like very embarrassing. It's like very embarrassing. Like never do fans want to take a picture with me while I'm like carrying big bags looking like that. Um, I had to make a second trip for the suitcase. I made the second trip for the suitcase. Do it again, raining outside, dragging the suitcase, fans in my face. It was so humiliating. I was like, what the f I get in the car, I'm tight. So I'm, I went to the bathroom, I'm taking my makeup off, and I'm like, yo, you know you asked me to, like, take my bag. I mean, not you asked me. I'm like, yo, you know you told me to take my bags with me to the venue. You said that was, a, I, it was smart for me to take my bags and the reason why. And you even told me to tell your security to bring the bags upstairs. So why would it be a problem for him to bring the bags back to the car? And she goes, that's my security. He works for me. If he feels like he's going to, if he feels like he's doing more work, he's going to want to get paid more. So I'm like, how much is he wanna, does he want to get paid more? Because if I'm going to be with her this whole tour, I would pay him more. I would pay him more to carry my bags. I don't want to be carrying my bags. I don't. Like, y'all seen all the fans seeing me carrying my bags? That was crazy to me. So I'm like, all right, we got to figure this out. So, like, how much you want to get paid more? He's like, he gets paid a flat rate. 
I'm like, is this girl serious? She said it like she had no idea what flat rate meant. If he gets paid a flat rate, that means that he'll move a house for you. He's getting paid to work for you. He got paid to work for you. He'll, he's moving anything you tell him to move. Cleo said as the tour kept going, her issues with Ice only got worse because at some point, Ice completely kicked her out of her room and she had to get her own place. This is when she started to realize Ice only brought her on tour to be the token black friend since everybody thought she hated black women and was a mean girl after Baby Storm exposed her. It got so bad that Cleo ended up trauma bonding with Ice's hairstylist because the stylist was also having a rough time on tour and they kind of became each other's support system until the tour ended. So she goes in the elevator, you're not gonna get your own room? I was like, what? I didn't know I was getting my own room. I was mad confused. I'm like, oh, that's what I was trying to understand. And I stopped the elevator door from opening. Girl, why you can't say nothing to nobody? Like, why when you why do you always try to get why do you always try to give like an embarrassment kind of vibe? Like it's not even embarrassing, but it's like that's the vibe that you that you make it seem like you try to give all the time. Like, girl, you could have texted me that. Cleo, make sure you get your own room. This is the hotel we staying at. Like, damn, why we gotta get to the whole the, the hotel and you telling me you're not gonna get your own room? Like, I could have had the room booked already before we got here boo but on top of that i didn't even know that i was paying for hotel rooms because they're staying at five five star hotel rooms every place her labels covering everything label 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 everything's covered you know what i'm saying i'm an independent artist why would i come on this tour knowing that i had one day to prepare now i'm gonna have to pay for five star hotels in every city this is not something that I signed up for. This is not something that I was prepared for. This is not something that I told my label about. Maybe they could have, not even maybe, they would have helped me. They would have helped me. But you gave me one single day to, to prepare for a tour that you knew about months ago. That's so crazy to me. But we know why now. We know now that you added me to the tour simply because you wanted to damage control. The situation with Baby Stormy was making you look crazy. You thought to yourself, and this is things that I realized after the fact. I told y'all, I already thought that she was trying to make it up. But it wasn't a makeup matter. It was her trying to clean up everything that was going on with her. And let's add Cleo to the tour. So so people think that I'm a good friend. So people think that I, I give opportunities to, to her and I'm nice and I, I'm good. Mm -mm. Her hairstylist end up saying like, you know, you should stay, stay. You, you got your fans coming out. You already promoted it yourself. Like your fans is coming to see you do it for your fans. She put that battery in my back to really like, I had to put, get my head back on a swivel. Like, yo, like make this situation what you can make it and just ignore everything else. So I end up staying with the hairstylist. She let me stay inside her hotel room. Every city that we went to, we st I stayed with her and she was mad nice and it just, it was so fun with her. Like it really just gave like, it was just fun. Like it felt, it felt like how it was supposed to be with Ice, but she's boring. Like she's boring. She doesn't want to do anything. She doesn't even want to play Uno. Like I don't, like she doesn't even want to do anything. The bus rides be bad, boring. It just be boring. So like being with her hairstylist really showed me like the fun side of the tour. And she even said it herself, like, yeah, you made this tour so like easy going. Like you just made it fun. And I'm glad that she felt that way because she made that for me too. But it gets even worse from this point. Because after that, Ice went from being straight up mean and mistreating Cleo and even starving her at some point as some kind of revenge. Like she would get food for the entire team, but not get anything for Cleo. And when she did, she would tell everyone not to tell Cleo that they were fed. But she would have to go and look out for her own food. At some point, Cleo wanted to get a chicken salad, but Ice's team told her they wouldn't be able to get it for her because she ain't on the budget. And just in case y'all forgot, I specifically told Cleo at the start of all of this that she was going to be taken care of. Baby, none of this was giving that. Now moving forward, this is when it starts to really feel like mistreatment and just weird stuff. So the hairstylist shows me like a menu and stuff. She's like, oh, production and whatever. They're going to order food for everybody. Pick what you want. I was like, okay, I'll get the chicken salad just like you. Like, I'll just get a chicken salad. Then she shows me like a message where somebody from production is like, Cleo is not a part of the budget. So I'm just like, how am I not a part of the budget? But y'all invited me on tour. Like who and why? And why didn't they tell you that make sure Cleo's good? Make sure Cleo's good. Cleo is a part of the budget. 
Make sure Cleo's good. The same way you told me that I was going to be good. Why is your production saying that I'm not a part of the budget for a chicken salad? Chicken salad? I'm not a part of the budget for a chicken salad? Y'all could have bought that chicken salad and literally got the money from my manager or me. But y'all wanted to show me so bad that I can't get nothing and that nobody is here for me that I couldn't even get a chicken salad. I gagged. I was like, wow, this is corny. I ain't saying nothing. No, remember I said I wasn't saying anything about anything. I was just going to take everything in and whatever. Now we're in Texas. We're in between Texas and Mexico. What do you guys think of when y'all think Texas? The, the Between Texas and Mexico. Desert. Desert. Tumble. Nothing for miles. No Uber Eats. No Uber to Eats. And there's nothing. We're at a Best Western or whatever one of those hotels are. We're in the middle of nowhere. That's how you know because we're at one of those Best Western hotels. And, um, yeah, no food. There's a McDonald's all the way down the block. Eight minute walk. Probably going to get bit by scorpions and all sorts of other bugs while walking through the desert to McDonald's. So, me and her hair stylist, we're in the hotel. We just sleeping and stuff. It's like 2 o'clock. We get up around like 5 or 6. I call Ice. I'm getting ready and, and her, me and her hair stylist is about to make videos or whatever. I call. I'm like, oh, let's make TikToks. She's like, um, like with that soulless demon face, just, um, you're with my hair stylist. So, like, damn, my bad. It was really seeming like she didn't really want me to be friends with her hair stylist. But it's like, damn, I don't got no friends. So I'm going to make friends with that actually want to be my friend. I'm sorry. I hung up on her after that because it was just like, ew. Like, all right, I'm with your hairstylist. So what that mean? Like, oh, like, I can't, like, I'm not ready, obviously. Like, it was just the attitude around it that was just so weird and corny to me. I'm just like, okay, whatever. Went downstairs and I seen her in the lobby. And her and some other boy, one of our friends, is just standing there, you know, with a basketball. I'm like, oh, what y'all just did? Oh, we was playing basketball, whatever, whatever. Nobody said anything about eating. Nobody. I'm like, we, me, me and the hairstylist keep talking about food. We like, oh, damn, we mad hungry. Like, we mad hungry. Just a McDonald's. Or, nobody said anything about food while me and her are talking about how hungry we are. Now we go to the boys' bus, tour bus, and we just sitting on the bus. We just like, yo, like... Can somebody come with us to McDonald's? Like, nobody want to walk there by themselves. We, we fake one of men with us. They like, oh, that's mad far. Like, nah, like, where? There's a desert. It's scary. I don't know. I'm like, okay. Nobody said anything about food still. Come to find out, everybody ate. <laughs> Can you believe that? Everybody ate. Guess what? They all went to a steakhouse. Everybody went to a steakhouse and left me, the hairstylist, and the makeup artist. Everybody went to go get a bite, steak, mash, cream corn, spinach. And we didn't have anything. We didn't eat at all. We're trying to figure out how to get a McDonald's. And y'all all ate already? Nobody mentioned it. You know why nobody mentioned it? Because it was a secret. It was a secret, and I gagged. One of the things that I have to charge to the game, I guess... I'm like, what? They said, don't say anything. We don't want to make it a problem. All right, I'm not going to say anything. As all of this was going on, Ice actually caught wind of it, and she got to crashing out online because she felt like Cleo was coming for her. But instead of her addressing the real issues that Cleo mentioned in her rant, she reduced it down to Cleo just being mad about food and called her ungrateful. Not only that, but she had the gall to body shame Cleo and said that she vacuumed down food that she bought her at a certain restaurant while they was on tour. Yeah, I'm about to actually go to sleep for real this time but i'm about to announce the the europe tour dates because for me the the go on bro regardless the is still gonna go on that's the gag so tomorrow i will most likely be thousand listeners and i'm sharing my stage with you and you feeling so entitled like you thinking that my my like my peoples that work for me is supposed to work for you too like that's so crazy to me like how I'm in the shower, you gon' you gon' barge in while I'm naked, trying to press me about some bags that you gotta carry some bags. What? Like, nah, that's that, sh bro. But that's all I could do, y'all. All I could do is sigh about it, cause it's just like, what can you do, bro? It's like, damn.
Crash outs and they going on rants, bro. Crash outs and they going on rants. But so at the end of the day, it's whatever, bro. Like, this comes with it, you know? Like, y'all see clearly this, that, this, right? So, but the whole thing that's blowing me right now is like talking about some dark energy, trying to compare a tour bus to a ship. Like, what are you talking about right now? What? That is crazy to me, bro. That's so crazy to me. Like, you really gonna be friends with somebody for two years, but the whole time you feel like they soulless and dark? Like, you sound dumb as a bitch. You think we both need saving. Like, what the f are you talking about, bro? Like, we was dead the, we was at the movie theaters. We was siphon. You not gonna tell the people how we was at an Italian restaurant and you ate so much food, you f vacuum, that the server was like, where did the food go? Like, stop it right now. You talking about some, she ain't let me to the back of her room on her tour bus. She had this big ass room. Can I play with my p one time in my bed one time? Like, damn, you want to sleep in my bed every day? That's crazy to me. Baby Cleo did not let this slide, and she clowned Ice for having the audacity to speak on her weight when she's out here using Ozempic to unbig her back and lying to the internet that she in a gym. She said, imagine being called big by somebody that was just big. I'm going to bed, bro. Ozempic got you gassed and fat phobic now? Bet. P, you was shaking on your bus thinking bees sent people to get you jumped. Whole time, it was a lady and her kids just trying to get an autograph. Like, hell. Who the F told you to start with that lady anyways? Nobody. You picked with her, now you scared. But Cleo did not end it there, baby. She also exposed Ice for lying about being black. If y'all remember, Ice revealed that her mom is Filipino and that her dad is Nigerian, which means she gets all her blackness from her dad. But it turns out that man ain't even Nigerian. He's Dominican. What's your background? Like, where are you from? I'm from New like York. Like, your nationality. Like, oh, my dad is black. And my mom is Dominican. Oh, okay. Are you black? Yeah, I'm black. And if y'all remember, Cardi and Ice got into it a few months ago over this specifically, when Cardi said she didn't understand why people were always questioning her blackness because her parents are Afro-Latino, but they didn't question Ice, who also has Afro-Latino parents. But Ice defended herself by saying her dad is actually Nigerian, which meant she was half black. But baby, according to Cleo, who's actually spent time around Ice and her family, that man is not Nigerian. Somebody commented under one of Cleo's posts and said, her her father has never been confirmed as Nigerian, lol. To which Cleo replied, Her father is a Hispanic man. I seen him on tour. Chell, not Ice out here treating black women like trash while pretending to be one. Baby, you can't make this up. And get this, Ice's Hispanic father tried to do some damage control for his daughter by responding to Cleo and claiming he's black, which we all know is a lie. He said, Cleo Trappa, we met twice in the green room. We barely spoke. Who said I'm Hispanic? I'm gonna dead this right Right here, I'm a black man, born and raised in the Bronx. Keep me out this BS. Someone checked him in the comments and said, your daughter put you in this, telling people you Nigerian, then telling Cleo to go back up her lie. To which he replied, we took an ancestry test, you effing moron. Not this man and his daughter clinging on to that 2.5% Nigerian they got in him. Child, please. Now, ISIS manager James Roseman also went on a yapping spree on Twitter and kept on running his mouth about how ungrateful Cleo was, but nobody cared. And neither did Cleo, cause she posted two more videos about what Ice did to her and went in. She showed us these text messages that she sent to Ice after the tour, explaining how the entire situation made her feel. But Ice didn't care and called Cleo a jealous, ungrateful bum. In the messages, Ice said, nah, you're mad ungrateful, but I expect that by now. Even James said it. Not even gonna over explain myself. Also, didn't know you was on the bus. It's my fault for inviting you and then look at your tweets acting like i had you on the street begging for food this that ish yadi was talking about she went on to say enjoy your little story time to which cleo replied enjoy being friendless and then ice replied enjoy being careerless you think you're the only b i was friends with and title loser thinks the world revolves around them so it's not even about not it's not even about being scared to say it to her it's about being scared to see your reaction in person. Like your reaction would have led to something, something bad, something bad. And I wouldn't even have been able to say everything that I just said. You would have cut me off. 
You would have cut me off. But the fact that I said so much and all you had to say was that somebody was ungrateful, you just wanted all of this to be a reason to call somebody ungrateful. You wanted all of this so that when something was to happen or you was to mistreat me, it was like, girl, look at all I did for you. You mad ungrateful. Like, girl, just because you gave somebody an opportunity doesn't mean you have to treat them like and I could tell that everything that was happening with management or production, that was all from your mouth is what I'm now coming to understand. That you was the one behind the scenes making sure that Cleo don't get no chicken salad or um, make sure she don't get no room. Make sure Cleo not in my room. Like, but how are you going to tell me I'm going to be with you? That doesn't make any sense. So you, if you were so mad about the bag situation in Philly, why didn't you just straight up tell me, bro? This toy is not going to work out. That's what you should have just said. That's what you should have just said. But since you didn't say that, and I just got a, like, a hint of just weirdness, I took a step back and just made the opportunity what I could make it. But it wasn't genuine at all. Nothing that you do is genuine. Everything is calculated. Like I said, I was the token black friend. You didn't have your other best friend around because you said that she didn't match your aesthetic. Like, there's something very wrong with somebody that is only friends with somebody for their aesthetic. I don't know what's wrong with you, but I should have never let you take my swag. I should have never even gave you a piece of it. Because Lord knows that you was wearing bodysuits and Jordans when you first came out. Now, all of a sudden, it's mini skirts, it's little dresses, and big chunky Like, girl, that's me. And I let you have it. Because I thought we was friends. But boo, you're going to have to give it back and figure something out now. Because I don't like what... I, I did not like that at all. But you know what? I'm initially going to do. Charge it to the game and let everybody know what type of human being you are. Because it's not even like what type of girl you are. What type, what type of human being you are. You're not a girl's girl. You're not for the girls at all. You're not. That's why you barely have any friends, and that's why you most definitely don't have any black friends. Never seen any black girl around her. And the black friend that you did have exposed you. But I'm doing this a little differently because I want people to actually feel it. I want people to actually feel it. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all can still support her and y'all can still love her down. Y'all could do everything. But let me tell y'all what y'all not going to do. Don't disrespect me behind her. Don't disrespect me behind her because I was nothing but a good friend to her. I'm telling you, bro. As usual, people had a whole lot to say about this. And of course, they were not on ISIS side at all. One person said, how you invite me on tour one day before it starts? Tell me that I'm good and going to be with you just for you to treat me like an unwanted bother is crazy work. Stay away from people like that. Another person said, ICE is a hot mess and her fall off will be one for the books. Way too entitled to not have any solo hits. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Cleo exposing Ice for using black women? And do y'all think Cleo was right for exposing Ice like this? Y'all been knew what to do? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And don't forget to click here to watch this other very messy video.